Hello everyone and welcome back to another part of my F1 23 driver career mode hit with Alpha Tauri. If you haven't if you haven't seen last episode yet that came out last week, be sure to go check that out because it was an absolute banger for us as a team. We ended up winning the race. Yes, our first race win, which is really good for us, especially off the bat of those engine failures towards the start of the season. Third place in Canada, a win in Austria, heading to our home race in Silverstone. Can we go for the win again? Hopefully we can. Sonoda also P4. Unfortunately, not a podium for him. Alonso snatched it off him in the last lap on the last lap. Hopefully he can come back strong today. That means we're now seventh in the standings and the constructors solidified as fourth. Really, forty-four points off from Aston Martin, and we have a better car. So hopefully we can do that. First, though, we have our contract renewal. We're going to renegotiate with the current team and go for a high-risk option because I'm thinking surely they'll want to keep us. So we do the high risk, and they actually don't want to keep us for that amount of money. So now I have the option to with to sign with other teams, but decide just to wait and skip another day and then renegotiate at a lower price. We go for the medium risk this time. And yep, though they will sign us back for the remainder of the season. So that's good. I don't think there's any been any driver changes overall. No perk. We can't boost any more R and D, unfortunately. Only two hundred ten thousand. But now let's skip some time and see where if there are any upgrades for Silverstone. First, our own R and D. The intercooler failed, if you remember. We can't really do another chassis upgrade because we don't have the R and D. So we're gonna. I thought about repurchasing the intercooler. Decided overall. No, so we're going to buy this minor drag reduction, which should come in time for Spa if we're not if we're lucky. So let's skip now. Let's skip some time and go to the race weekend. I just want to point out though here, Sonoda ninety rated. I I didn't notice this. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but really, really impressive from Sonoda ninety rated. That's really good. If you guys do remember last time, I did mention this at the start, but the championship fight is getting spicy. Signs was left on those hards from off the safety car restart. And he must have felt like Hamilton did in Zanvor last year. And end up dropping down to P6 Perez. Beat him to the line in the end. So extended his championship lead. And the R&D was still third best team. Haas now the worst team after Alfa Romeo were the worst for quite a while. No one really made any major upgrades. Let's so now we've done practice. We've got one thousand nine hundred R and D to spend, and I decide to do with it is purchase a uh, repurchase the intercooler. We can't do another aerodynamics upgrade, so we, that we're not going to be doing that. Don't want to do a durability upgrade. So I decided to purchase a sh obviously I have to purchase a chassis upgrade, and I'm going to go for a weight redistribution. But first, I'm going to repurchase the intercooler. That should come, that will definitely come in time for Spa, and now we're going to purchase this fuel tank positioning, the major weight redistribution. So that will come in time for Monza. Thought about if the weight reduction might be better, but decided that. A weight redistribution since on offer. Might as well purchase that now. Now let's head to qualifying for our home race, the British Grand Prix. Can we get in the top three in qualifying? I hope we can. Our first fuel system fault, which means that we will have to wait in the garage for a bit. It's, I mean, it's not terminal, so it should be fine. But hopefully that doesn't mean we're going to have like an engine failure in in um, 
in the race so we can do our setup as normal I don't really usually show that but anyway let's head to quali and do our first flying lap hopefully we can set a good lap I only want really want to do one lap here around Silverstone for the Q1 and only one for Q2 so this lap better be good felt all right and that's a good lap P2 very solid from us and that stays P2 and that's all we're going to do for this session everyone else is going to go out again obviously we're not and that's going to be it for us P5 and P8 so we're both through to Q2 quite comfortably Lando Norris, by the way, in the McLaren, really impressing in Q1. In Canada, he was P3 as well, but in Q2, he just couldn't make it through. We've lost both Alpines, though. Alpine really must... Surprised they re-signed both their drivers. They're not very good, are they? So then, here we go, then. Second lap in Q... First lap in Q2, second lap overall. And I noticed this during the lap... Um, you guys haven't seen this because I've been editing that bit out, but I've been taking cops completely flat out. Usually you need a little lift off, but I've been taking it completely flat out and staying on the circuit as well. So this first lap then, hope it's good. I mean, it does didn't feel bad, but that curb taking there, not the best. P2, which is quite good, but four tenths off for Stappen. It's not what we want. So that end up being P8. So we're going to go out again on another set of soft tyres, and as you saw there, Lando Norris was on the soft. It was in P15 there. So we're going out again. Hopefully, we can find an improvement here. But we've gone purple in the first sector, purple in the second sector. It's been an absolute fabulous lap from us. Really found found the time, and that's going to shoot us up all the way into P1 for Q2. Fantastic. That's exactly what we need for Q3. Sonoda, though, in our, our teammate, only just makes it through by eight thousandths of a second. Very lucky there, really. Both Alfa Romeo's making it through. Alfa Romeo have been making Q3 quite consistently, I've noticed, but they just haven't got the points on the board. Leclerc didn't even set a lap in his Ferrari. What happened there, then? Both Aston Martins also out. And, yep, yeah, like I said, the McLarens, the Norris, P14. We go then. First lap in Q3 on the new set of tyres. Hopefully we can, can be a really good like, banker, because we're going to go out again on the, another new set. This lap overall felt pretty decent. Took a bit too much curb on the inside there, but overall very solid lap. That's going to be a 26.8, so into the 26s, and that is good enough for provisional pole. And we're still provisional pole by just five, you know, six hundredths, I believe, we're still by provisional pole. But we're going to go out again now on another new set of soft tyres, Hamilton ahead of us. And this lap, I'm going to show you the whole thing because I was quite proud of it. A really, really solid lap. We just gained time in a variety of places. I mean, two tenths, three tenths almost going as we and getting some slipstream from Hamilton. I'm sure that helped. Purple in the first sector. It's now, I think, I believe Hamilton's also on a flying lap, and we're catching up to him quite rapidly. That's quite worrying for him. Five tenths up through as we go through cops, where this Hamilton's infinite, Im, infamous crash with Verstappen to, in 2021, getting a lot of slipstream from Hamilton. I think that might have helped us a lot, but still, this lap has really felt just on the limit. I'm not sure I could have pushed much more and set a better lap. Unfortunately for us, though, and and for for me, as I'll find out at the end of. Um, at, the, at the start of the race this is my Q2 tyre set I did not use my Q3 tyre set and you can't use your Q3 tyre set for the race so that was a bit annoying when I came to the race I had to start on the mediums but purple in the first sector purple in the second sector purple in the third sector 
what a lap, pole position by four tenths to Carlos Sainz. A, a stonking lap from us. Yuki Tsunoda in P6. Perez and Verstappen locking, uh, not locking out, locking out the second and third row. Both Alfa Romeo's in P10 and 11. Joe, two seconds, almost three seconds off the pace. Very disappointing from him. And here, I, I'm not sure why, but in the, in this whole session, the, the audio just cut out of the of the recording. I'm not sure why. So we won't be able to see the grid sequence from Crofty. You can see the subtitles there. Apologies for that. Okay then, pole position for us. No penalties, and hopefully no engine failures. And here I realise that we can't use the soft tyres. I immediately try and put them on, but I see that I've used them. They're used, so that's not good for us at all. So we're going to have to do a medium-hard strategy. Everyone else in the top ten will also be doing a medium-hard strategy. Or a hard-medium. So, that's not... Good. It looks like the hard mediums faster, but I want the mediums to start off with. So yeah, everyone else in the top ten or nine, because Joe Bunny you had a penalty, remember? Or if you watch the grid sequence, he did have a, he does have a penalty. So we start on the mediums. People around us on the hards formation map. From pole position, its lights, its lights have gone green, and away we go for the formation lap. <laughs> Hamilton also starting on the hards. Perez and Verstappen both on mediums. I believe Sonoda's on the hards as well. Let's line up. Hopefully, we can get a good line up here. Our home race. We really be want to be winning this. And yeah, really good. Point four. We'll take that. We'll take that. We'll take that. So now we just wait here because for such a long time because everyone at the back has obviously not got around because we're on pole. Here we go then. Five red lights for the Silverstone circuit. The British Grand Prix from pole position. It's lights out and away we go. It's a good start for us. It's a good start for science too. But the medium tyre is just giving us that extra grip, that extra bit of traction that we need to get off the line. It's into turn one we go through Abbey leading our home race. And that is really, really good for us. That's what exactly what we wanted. Perez jumps Hamilton off the line, up into P3. 
Perez on the mediums, that extra attraction really helping, but Sainz is hungry. He won the British Grand Prix last year. Can he, is he, he's going for the win this year as well. We break late. Sainz trying to go down the inside. Now he's going to have to go the long way around. We just can keep it on the inside. Sainz can't hold it around the outside. And is that left him vulnerable to Sergio Perez behind? I have no idea. I don't, I don't, I think he's okay. I don't think Perez is going to go for the move into Cobbs. That would be a little risky, and Christian Horner might have a couple words to say about that, but we still lead at the end of Sector 1, but Sainz here, he's hungry for this race win, trying to go side by side with us into Mackett and Beckett's. So we're not having any of that, and we shut that out, but we still lead at the end of Sector 2, and going into Sector 3, Really, really chaotic lap as we go a bit deep there. Not the best, but still in first. Signs behind us by about a tenth and a half. He's hungry for this race win, I can tell. On the hard tyres too. Really, really good job to be, to be fair to him. And now it's lap three. Signs with DRS, trying to going for the lead here. Perez trying to follow him through. We're gonna go defensive to the inside. Just keep it. Is Signs gonna make the dive bomb? Down the inside? No, he's not. He's going to stay behind. And he tries to go for the switch back there on us, but can't quite do it. But now he gets a great exit off the last corner as we start lap four. Carlos Sainz going for the move on the inside. We squeeze him to the inside. Go wide. And a Sainz, he's crashed. Paris has crashed. What's happened there then? Virtual safety car. Five second penalty for Carlos Sainz. Paris is out of the race. What has happened? We need to know. So Sainz has gone on the inside, and he's just, there wasn't any room for him. We let we did leave him the room, but he just couldn't break. You can't really break from there, and Perez has just been a just passenger then, just collected. Not much Perez could do about it. Sainz just went on the curb. From Hamilton's view, we squeeze Sainz, go to the outside. You can't really turn in from there. So you've got to take a more wider line to cut in, but Perez is out. Bit of controversy there, the two championship rivals. But Sainz now with a five second penalty, will he still be able to get points? Christian Horner probably fuming on the radio. Ten second pine penalty for Carlos Sainz is what he'd probably say. What the FIA would probably say after they get that decision. But I'm surprised that's not a full safety car to be honest. And yep, well, as I say that, a full safety car is deployed. But, so we're going to pit this lap, I decide, because we might as well. Mediums to hard. The mediums were about 20% worn, so we do pit this lap. Hamilton following us in. Signs stays out, which I find a bit odd, considering he has the five-second penalty. Verstappen also staying out. Sonoda staying out as well. Oh, I would have double-stacked. We were probably far enough ahead. Two double stack. So now we box. Good stop from the crew, please. More than ever today, especially as we're leading. Get a hold out. We're held up a bit by Albon. Should be. That's fine. That's fine. We're we're ahead of Hamilton. And that's all that really matters. So we're still we're still the leader, de facto leader of the race. So exit the pit lane. Have to catch up to the safety car now. Hamilton gone to the mediums, he was starting on the hards, remember. Hulkenberg on the softs, so now we do catch up to the safety car at the end of lap fives. And we and obviously I'm do I do the broadcast safety car, so catch up, AI takes control and P eleven then. Hamilton directly behind us. And I noticed this. This is very, very weird. Many people pit, okay? So we but for some odd reason we just went happened just came at the, on lap five we're just down in we're just down in p18 i have no idea why i i have no clue why we're in p18 up because obviously i'm not controlling this so then more people pit so we go up to p11 but we, sh we should we should be where hamilton is we should be in p2 right now because obviously everyone else is pitting because they pit to avoid the double stack, but for some reason, are are the safety car? Is that some sort of safety car glitch or something where we just can't, we 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 couldn't overtake like ten cars 
So we're in P9 now. Hamilton's in P2. That's maybe cost the chance to win our home race. I can't see us winning from P9 now. I don't think Verstappen's pit, but P8 still. Six cars to overtake, including a Ferrari and a Mercedes. That's going to be difficult. And they can pull away while we're fighting with the other cars. And an Aston Martin as well, Fernando Alonso. We know he's not going to give up that position easily. I have no idea why this has happened. So from now on, I'm not going to be doing the broadcast safety car. I do not trust it. We're going to be doing the, we're just going to be doing the authentic safety car. I'll change that in time for in, for, for next episode if I, episode if I remember. But I'm I'm very annoyed with this because it's it's just well it's just lost us possibly the race win and if we lose to the champ the championship now by like twenty five points or something, then I'm just I'm gonna be so mad. If we lose the championship by twenty five points by how by however minus how many points we gain today. Hopefully we can still gain some points. The safety car in there slap them. Verstappen leading. I don't know why he's still out, why he hasn't pit. Should have put under the safety car. Red Bull messing up their strategy, something you don't see every day. Here we go then, racing again. Here at Silverstone. Don't get a good exit out of the final corner at all. Piastri a lot closer to us. We're a second behind Magnus, and that's not what we want. Our hard tyres just not firing up at all. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Two seconds a lap. Thanks a lot about that car catching me by two seconds a lap. Yeah, we're under a safety car, mate. Anyway, we're gonna have to catch up to Magnus, and he's in a Haas, which is the worst car on the grid. Hope, luckily, now as we as now we try and go down the inside, I think oh, just a bit too close. Lap eight can't quite do it, but on the straight, can we? ERS, DR, no DRS just yet. Gaining, gaining, gaining. Slipstream, much better power down the inside. A textbook move. And now we can have to, we'll have to catch up to Fernando Alonso, Lando Norris. I believe up before in front of him is Alexander Albon, then Charles Leclerc, and then Valtteri Bottas, and then Hamilton leads outright as our DRS is enabled. As we start lap 8 and now on lap 10 we get we catch up to the pack go down the inside of Norris get a snap of oversteer and now we can get DRS to try and put oh, well we're not going to get DRS because our rear wings failed well that, that that's really helpful thanks team we're going to have to now overtake these cars using pure battery power and hopefully our engine will do the rest that's not... Oh, are you serious? We could have got a second place this race. We could have. Yeah, thanks, Mum. My DRS is unavailable. Yeah, you better fix it quickly, buddy. Or I'll be sacking you. Absolute shambolic race, this. I mean, I know this isn't a glitch, but here now of all time, just when I was about to open it as well, look, that's how angry I am. That move on Fernando Alonso I just done there shows how angry I am. I'm fuming. The battery, I don't think, is recharging properly as well. It's all it's all going wrong. Obviously, I'm using it a lot more than I normally would. But still. So now we want to get this move on Albon done quickly so we can get Bottas and hopefully get on the club. We do a copycat move of what we've done on Lando Norris. Again, get a bit of oversteer. Just like we did with Lando Norris. And we would open the DRS here to catch up to Bottas. But, oh wait, we can't. Yep, just checking there. Rear wing still not working. All race, it I get bet probably won't work. No, actually no, it will probably work after we overtake Bottas. Probably get fixed. But now in a we're a sitting duck on the straights. Let's be honest, absolutely nothing I can do. We have to use battery to defend because we've got no DRS. Albon tries to go round the outside, can't do it because. Really glad I invested in my engine power now. But Bottas up ahead, we're gonna need we're gonna need to catch up to him as quickly as possible and overtake him. Because Leclerc, three seconds up the road, 
We're going to need to catch up. And I, I'm angry, so I want to go side by side through Mackerts and Beckett. That's a brave move. And we would get DRS to pull away from now. But our rear wing's not working. So now Bottas has slipstream to go for the move. We have to use a bit of VR battery. I don't think he would have gone for the move, even if he had DRS and had... But we've now got 3.3 seconds to catch up to Leclerc. Great. But when we get within a second, we get DRS, right? Well, yeah, we would if our team doesn't has fixed DRS. And now we go three wide there in, on lap 17. Going to go back down the inside of both of them. Sitting duck on the straights. Team still hasn't fixed our rear wing. Obviously, we wouldn't have got DRS there at all, but we would have had more ERS because we wouldn't have to save. So now, we, on, on the last lap of the race, this is going to be a really, really intense lap. If we can get to the end of this straight, this podium should be secured, but although it should really be the race win. But here comes Fernando Alonso, deploying all our battery. We're going to single digits now, and he's overtaking us at the line. Can we try and go back around the inside? Alonso looks up, we're out. Oh, my word, we crashed into the back of him. We've crashed into the back of Fernando Alonso. No! No! No, you serious? Alonso goes for the move on the inside, locks up, and we're just a passenger then, just like Sainz and Perez early on, earlier on. Are you kidding? Our home race, a race we should have won. Hamilton ends up winning. At least he wins his home race. But, oh... Got to be kidding. We're on the out. We try and go back around the outside. He locks up. Oh. That's 15 points we've lost. Right, Alonso. You, Alonso on that safety car glitch could cost us, cost us the championship now. Oh, one, by the way. Great move from double overtake there from him. Take the tight line. He's in the up into third place and he'll finish like that. But, oh, are you kidding? We have to retire the car. Oh. Oh. What could have been? What could have been? Yeah, comfort me, mate. I'm going to need it. Not much you can do. Alonso better get a penalty for that. Again, audio not working, guys. Sorry about this. Hopefully, I'll get it back working again for next race. Albon, though, on the standing on the podium, his first podium in Formula One. Really impressive for him to be in P4, to be in P5 still. But Hamilton wins his home race. Leclerc P2. We could, we could have. That could have been us. That could have been us. Signs now leads the Drivers' Championship, by the way. After all that, including his five-second penalty, he still managed to get fifth. I'm not sure if that was simulated or if that was the place he actually was in. Obviously, he would have been in seventh if it weren't for Alonso and I crashing. Bottas in fourth. First points this season, I think. Twelve points. Very, very solid. But what that... At Hamilton, we could have had that. We could have had that. 3 DNF, I didn't mention this by the way, Ocon DNF'd um, when I was catching up to the safety car, he had an engine issue. I forgot to mention that, but at least Sonoda gets points, but only one point. Oh. He's in the standings, now P7, 88 points, still P7, 88 points off the drivers. Only th Alonso only three points behind us. 
It's a good thing everyone who ran the drivers' ch championship that ran the lead didn't exactly do really well. This race, no real Red Bull and Ferrari, by the way, level on points in the constructors. That's going to be really, really interesting to see how that goes forward. Oh, but at least that at least our gearbox works. Gonna have three upgrades in for Spa. But if you have enjoyed, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. If you get a like, Alonso will get bad luck in Spa and get and crash out. Well, I hope he will. But if you haven't got on a serious note, if you have enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. It does help out so much. And I'll see you guys next time for Spa, one of my favourite circuits. Goodbye.